Good afternoon class, my name is Luis Acevedo. Today I will be doing my YouTube lesson on the study of primates and primate behavior. When studying primates, there are generally two different contexts for conducting primate research, uh, captive context and field context. Um, each context does have its benefits and its drawbacks, um, and it's more or less suitable for different research topics. Um, a captive primate study is a research program that is conducted uh, with primates in captivity or laboratories or zoos. Um, take, for example, apes or any type of um, uh, mammal that is within a laboratory or zoo. Researchers usually just study them from, in, from within the facility. Um, second one I do want to talk about is a field primate research study. Uh, this is more of a program that's conducted with primates in their wild habitat. Um, they're conducted in a less controlled environment than captive studies. Um, so they may researchers may have trouble locating and observing primates um, from uh, uh, from just wild levels of uh, captivity. Um, and uh, it does become a little bit more difficult because usually some of these animals might be um, in high levels of forest canopy. Um, they also do have a little bit of trouble with uh, the choice of age and sex for the available uh, primates. Uh, there are a couple, um, well two actually, uh, types of data when conducting these researches. Um, first one I do want to talk about is the qualitative data. Um, it's more of a descriptive data about the qualities that are observed from the animal and quantitative data. Uh, and it's that's more focused and clearly uh, more of a measurable data. Um, there are two types of um, of observations. There's a group observation, and um, that's more of the observation of many individuals simultaneously. And uh, more of a there's also a focus observation, which is more of an observation of a single individual um, at a time. I do want to move over um, to types of primate behavior. Uh, we do have something called affiliative behavior, which is more of a behavior that uh, is generally cooperative. Um, these types of behaviors are uh, meant to reinforce social bonds and affiliations. Um, and one of the more common uh, behaviors in primates is grooming. Uh, you've probably seen it um, when you've gone to the zoo or you've probably seen it in movies um, when uh, monkeys or apes are kind of picking at each other and they're moving uh, you know their hair around to to groom them um, they most of the time just pick each other's furs uh, and they remove insects or plants of parts uh, they sometimes remove the materials and they eat it uh, sometimes can be insects uh, it promotes good health and hygiene uh, by keeping the fur clean and uh, and free of pests uh, now the second type of um, uh, behavior I do want to talk about is more of an uh, uh, aggressive behavior. Uh, this behavior, it, uh, it challenges and threatens or harms others. Um, this can reinforce social behaviors and it may be vi uh, verbal or nonverbal. Non um, for nonverbal communications, uh, it can take anything up on um, uh, just enforcing behaviors, uh, anything from uh, a combination of grooming behaviors or hand holding, um, any verbal vocalizations, um, they can communicate different um, types of informations, usually such as gorillas. That particular vocalizations uh, indicates uh, contentment and satisfaction. Um, you know, these sounds they're made when they're relaxed or when they reinforce the general sense of a of a social um, connection between the primates that are involved. Um, there is also something called a threat display. It's more of an action, um, you know, kind of when you see these uh, these monkeys or these apes uh, kind of just flash their teeth. It's pretty much like, a, uh, it looks like they're smiling, but they're actually not. They're actually flashing the teeth um, because, you know, it seeks to threaten others from distance. Um, now, there is also another type of communication. It's a, an affiliative communication. It's like I said, it's a verbal and nonverbal communication that 
uh, reinforces social uh, relationships. Um, I do want to go over to primate sexual behavior. Um, within primate groups, uh, there are very uh, uh, different types of groups. Um, you know, to fully understand primate behavior, we have to consider a lot of things, especially primate sexual and reproductive practices. Um, usually male and female primates, they often have different strategies. Uh, for the most part, male primates emphasize, uh, it, it's their emphasis is placed on getting access to the females for, for matings. Um, and it's often accomplished uh, through competition with other males. Um, you know, or it could be related uh, to the male status within uh, the social hierarchy and the strength of the male's coalition. Pretty much, it's like if you're the top of the you know of the group and you're pretty much like the leader of the group, you kind of get any uh, of the female that you want. Um, competition, reproductive behavior, it uh, it impacts primate anatomy, uh, especially old world monkeys. Uh, they have spatial uh, special coloring. And that uh, indicates uh, from a distance if one male is facing a female of a certain species. Um, usually, they do have brightly colored fur around their genitals. Um, and it calls for further attention to their maleness. Uh, it kind of adds like a, that extra oomph, you know, to their, to their manly sense. Um, as for females... Uh, they have extreme swelling in their genital region, which around the time of ovulation is occurring. Uh, this is called the uterus, uh, esterus swelling. Sorry about that. Because it is, uh, it's time with the female esterus or the fertility cycle. Um, now I do want to move over to uh, primate communication and culture. Um, primates communicate in a very um, amazing way. Uh, many primates, you know, they have like these specific alarm calls. Uh, it indicates particular threat from a distance. Um, and although many primates do have different alarm calls uh, for different threats, um, I know that uh, they have certain specific ones for lions and other for birds of prey. Um, you know, they usually elicit different responses from the members of the group with each responding in its own particular way. Um, but it's also uh, good to take note that um, that these primates, they live side by side and the way they communicate is very fascinating. Take, for example, the howler monkey, uh, you know, they use loud howl vocalizations to mark their territorial boundaries. And that's just marking the territorial boundaries. You know, it's it's crazy how they have their own language and how they can communicate with one another. Um, and finally, I do want to talk about, um, something that I didn't really plan on talking about, but, uh, it's definitely primate conservation. Uh, it's sad to see that the homes of these, the, these, these animals, um, they're being destroyed and it's definitely affecting them in very negative ways. And I think primate conservation is something that we should all take the time and think about. Um, and see if there's anything we can do to help. Um, you know, they're increasingly under the threat of deforestation. And um, it's sad to see, you know, what's becoming of these animals. Um, you know, at, at any given point, these animals can become extinct. You know, and they're living in these tropical forests. And what humans are doing to, you know, to all with all the deforestation, um, it's very difficult for them to support themselves and let alone themselves, their families, um, you know, and a lot of these humans are just cutting down these areas of forests to make room for villages and farmlands. And um, it's, uh, it's very sad to think about these things, you know, but I think we should all take the time and see if there is anything we can do to help. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this lesson on primate behavior, the study of primate behavior, uh, uh, vocalization, uh, communication, and culture within these uh, these animals. Uh, and once again, I do really uh, suggest that we all do take the time to um, to further explore any options that we do that we might have with uh, primate conservation. Thank you.